Hey, thanks for checking out Creavy Tutorials once again. My name is Sar, and this is the ultimate motion graphics and kinetic typography tutorial. This part of the tutorial will be all about understanding basic motions in After Effects. So let's say we have this scene and we want to move the moon from point A to point B. In After Effects, there's something we call keyframes. Each keyframe contains values. When you're creating two different keyframes with two different values at two different points in time, you're creating a transition between the first keyframe to the second one. Because our goal is to move the moon from point A to point B, we're going to create two different position keyframes. And the first keyframe is going to contain the values of point A, while the second one is going to contain the values of point B. So when we play our animation, it's going to look like this. Let me explain to you a little more about position keyframes. Let's say we have a composition in a size of 1280 by 720. The way After Effects maps those pixels is by creating an X and Y graph, just like in math class. So while the top left point of the composition is the zero point, the bottom right point will be equivalent to the size of the composition itself. And that's because this point is the last X value and also the last y value. So it doesn't matter where you place an object in the composition, it's gonna always have x and y values. Whether if it's in the top left, on the bottom left, in the middle of the comp, and even outside the comp. But then it's gonna have negative values. And this is what it looks like in the software itself. x value and y value. So when we're talking about motion, the most common properties for an object are the position, the scale, and the rotation. And keyframes can be assigned to each property without causing any troubles to other properties. So as you can see in this example, the moon is not only changing its position, but it's also changing its size. When we're talking about the size of an object, we're talking about its width and its height. We have the ability to change them both for proportional scaling, and we also have the ability to change each one. It's also important to remember that we're talking about percentages and not x and y values. And this is what it looks like in the software. You can see horizontal scaling for width and vertical scaling for height. And do not forget that little percentage sign. When we're talking about rotation, we're talking about degrees. The default state on an object is zero degrees. So I can input different values like 90 or 180, but I can also input laps. And each single lap is equivalent to 360 degrees. So for example, if I'll ask the object to change its angle to 360 degrees, it's not gonna say one lap and 360 degrees. It's gonna say two laps and zero degrees. This is what it looks like in After Effects. You can change the degrees value from zero to 360. And you can also change the laps. One lap equals 360 degrees. So here's a live example. If I'll ask this layer to rotate 361 degrees, After Effects is gonna say, hey, you know what? Let's do one lap and one degree. So let's jump into After Effects. We'll go to Composition, New Composition, and we'll give it a name. We'll choose a width of 1280 and height of 720. 30 frames per second should be okay, and this composition will be 10 seconds long. We'll go to Layer, New Text, and we'll type in something like cake, because everybody likes cake. We'll choose a white color and we'll scale it down a bit. Hit V on the keyboard for using the selection tool and move this text somewhere to the left. Now by selecting this layer and hitting P on the keyboard, we're bringing up the position property. And just as before, we can change the X values and the Y values. If I'll reset them both, the text is gonna move to the top left corner of the comp, and if I'll input the comp size, it's gonna move to the bottom right point of the comp. Now as for the top left corner, we didn't see the text at all, and for the bottom right corner, we do see the text. That's really important. There's something called the anchor point. The anchor point itself is the base for the position, the scale, and the rotation properties for the layer. And in our case, the anchor point is not in the middle of the text, and we want it to be. So we'll choose this tool, and it's called the pan behind tool, and we'll grab the anchor point and move it to the middle of the text. So if we'll input those values again, we can see that the layer and the anchor point are exactly in place. And if we'll reset them, we can see that the same thing happens for the top left corner of the comp. You can see that stopwatch icon near the position property. When you click it, you create a keyframe on the timeline. As you can see right here, I can zoom into that keyframe 
we want to create the next keyframe in the 2 seconds mark. So we'll grab the time indicator and we'll move it to 2 seconds as you can see here. Now if I simply move the layer, After Effects automatically creates another keyframe for the position. And we now have a simple position animation. I can preview it by hitting 0 on the keyboard. Now, usually if you want to bring up the scale property, we'll hit S and the rotation property, we'll hit R. But we don't want to close the currently opened properties. So we'll select the layer and we'll hit Shift S and Shift R. I'll create keyframes for each one at the beginning of the timeline and I'll move forward to 2 seconds and we'll change the size to 150% and the rotation to 90 degrees. So it's very similar to the moon I showed you before. I can change different properties values without affecting other property values. And if I'll change it to 1 lap and 0 degrees, you can see I'm getting this cool effect. The next part is gonna be much crazier than this part. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks for watching and as always, thanks for checking out Creative Tutorials.